Hey everyone, I'm Tammy Sollenberger, the author of The One Inside, 30 Days to Your Authentic Self. This podcast is for anyone curious about who they are, the different parts of themselves, and for those who want to connect with their true self. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. One of the big things that I talk about in my chapter in the book that I really have spent a lot of time thinking about and, and talking about is, um, and that I, you know, when I'm working with parents is for us, it's the meaning that we're making of their behavior that we have to focus on. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So the meaning that, that my 13 year old me makes about my, my daughter's behavior is I'm getting rejected. I'm getting right. Like she's not going to love me. I'm going to be I'm going to be abandoned. So, um, so really getting curious about the meaning you're making of his behavior, I think is part of what will, what can help you kind of get some space. So, um, let, I'm just going to kick off of what you just said yeah. and the meaning that a part of me is making, because mm-hmm. that feels a little bit different like, than the meaning that I'm making of his behavior, the, the, the meaning a part of me is making right. his behavior. Right. Because my 13 year old is making one meaning. And then, you know, I think have younger parts that are like losing their playmate. Like we played that's together right. and we hung that's out right. together. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And when we, you know, when we, the meaning we can make of it from our maybe higher self is he's individuating and this is, you know, this is, but there's still those other parts in there that are like, feeling hurt or rejected or scared or, you know, and those are the ones that we have to get curious about and see what their, yeah, what their story is and where their fear is coming from. Like I can't, one of the, one of the stories I share in, in the chapter in this book is about, um, that maybe I've shared with you before is about a, a situation with my oldest daughter when I got on the internet to look at her grades. Cause I hadn't looked at them, you know, all semester and she had like all C's, D's and F's. And, um, I, you know, went crazy with that. Like I spent the whole, the whole rest of the day at work ruminating and trying to separate from my parts that were completely freaking out. And I came home with the intention of having a conversation, a self-led conversation with her And because I had been pushing my parts down all day, they just, I mean, I think that's probably the most hijacked I've ever been in my entire life that Mm -hmm. I can, that I can think of. Um, I lost it. Like when I went in to talk to her, I started out with, well, I went to check on your grades today and what the hell is going (laughs) on? You know, like I just completely became this other crazy person. And, um, it was, yeah, it was a, it was not a good exchange. And then when I got some space and was able to kind of get curious about what was happening for me, I was terrified, right? Mm -hmm. She was, I think it was her senior year. She was wanting to go to college. I was terrified for her that she wasn't going to be able to do anything that she wanted to do when I saw those grades. But what I found out was she was still doing makeup work. She had been out of school for an entire week with the flu. Mm. And so she was still doing her makeup work. And because she hadn't gotten everything in, they were all calculating as zeros at the time. So really she had all A's and B's, but that's, it wasn't reflected right Right. on the grades on online. So, so yeah, it's, yeah. The stories we make, the, the places that we go when with our kids in any given situation, um, yeah, can really well, take us in the rabbit hole. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking just to sort of like orient reader readers, <laughs> we've been talking about writing books. So the yeah, orient- right. <laughs> listeners, um, cause we're just going to jump in. So Leslie and I have been talking for the past 25 minutes about just sharing, just catching up and stuff. And so I started, I'm going to start this, this uh, episode kind of in the middle of our conversation. Um, and so we were talking about 
the pain of having, uh, so my son's 12, her kids. So how old are all your kids now? Uh, 24. I have to think about this 22, almost 25, 22 and 19. And so we were talking about that individual individuation. I can say that word. Individuation. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That happens that I'm really feeling for my 12 year old and Leslie's kind of feeling in maybe different ways, but feeling in sort of a different stage. And, um, and we're talking about the parts of us that get triggered with our kids and, um, and I love that Leslie was saying this, I, the idea of meaning making that we make about our children's behavior. So my kid doesn't, you know, he's not playing with Legos anymore and he's not, you know, we used to do these Mad Libs in my car. I have these three books of Mad Libs in my car and I'm like, he's not going to do that with me anymore. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe not for now, but, and it's, you know, these different parts of me that make meaning out of these really big changes that feel like loss it feels like these different stages of loss and we're talking about how you know parents don't really talk about this so that's sort of what's coming up for me as we're talking and then the other thing I was thinking is you know we talk about so you said you were hijacked more than you've ever been and I was thinking about how like we love our kids more than I've never loved anything or any right as much as I love him I've never been as mad (laughs) that's right that's exactly right both so, ends of the continuum for sure. Yeah. And then, yeah. And so sometimes I'm like, I don't understand why he gets so mad at like, uh, this little, this little person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can only, I mean, I, I remember when I came to the realization that we can only feel, um, joy to the depths of which we have felt pain. Right. And that's so true in parenting Mm -hmm. and we love this little it's like you know your your heart walking around outside of your body right I've seen people write about that and yeah and and so when they're when they're hurting we're hurting and learning how to be able to hold you know hold the separation to keep them separate and to know that their experience is not our experience my right. part is like, no, no, I'm not holding him separate. He's all mine. <laughs> it's no. hard. Yeah, all I can hear inside hard. is like, no, no, <laughs> not happening. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's hard. It's really hard. And, you know, my daughter had a similar, I think I wrote about this in my chapter too, had a similar experience that I had with her friend group when she was oh, um, wow. in high school. And okay. so that's another example of how, when our kids have something similar happen in their lives that we experienced, how important it is to separate out what's ours and what's theirs. And that is a great, you know, those are great trailheads and they can be really painful ones. Yeah. Yeah. But I learned a lot through that, through that process and really being able to see her for her rather than, you know, through my experience. Yeah. So how do people, how do people start to recognize that, that like separating out what's mine and what's his or what's, you know, what's yours and what's hers? Yeah. Well, I think first is, is really, you know, for me, it was the awareness of, oh, wow, this feels really similar to what I went through and just having that awareness in and of itself helped me kind of take pause um and mm. and to really begin to kind of go because I wanted to I had a part that wanted to go in and call the mom of this you know friend and give her a piece of my mind and like wanted to do all the things that that I wish that had been done for me or you know yeah it, in in overdrive And so, yeah, I think as I was realizing how much energy and activation there was for me around it, that's always my tell of, okay, there's more here, right. That I need to get curious about is just that level of, of reactivity or the level of activation that my system is experiencing. Yeah. It was like on a nine, you know, on a scale of one to 10. And so that's kind of when I'm like, okay, anything over probably two or three probably needs some level of attention. 
Yeah. And it's not just because I think what we could do is we could be like, yeah, I feel this at a nine, mm -hmm. but it's because, you know, I just love my kids so much or because like, yeah, you know, the right. different, you know, it's not fair or whatever, and not really looking inward at what part That's is right. being triggered. About and those what's things about might me. be true. Those things can be true that you love your kids so much and what's happening isn't fair. And we're not going to be able to guide them through if we're doing it from, you know, an, an activated place versus a self-led place. And yeah. so once I was really able to get some space and to, and to kind of work with my parts, then I was able to go back and support her, you know, mm -hmm. in a, in a much different way than I was when I started out from this activated place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can imagine, right. Like the 15 year old you that's sort of angry and angsty just sort of colludes with her part. That's, that's angry. right. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's go beat him up. You know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm going to have those parts too. Yeah. It's, I mean, I think it's natural that we all do. It's, mm. we love our kids more than anything, like you said, you know, mm. and our, our mama bear, there's nothing more fierce than mama bear parts. I, I like that also looking at that, like, yeah, there's this, these parts of me that are that fierce, these mom parts, but there's, there's also something else there for me to, mm -hmm. to be curious about. That's yeah. more about me and about something about my system. That's right. Yeah. And that's why the focus, you know, that I take on working with parents is really all about, like, I can give you some techniques and, and tips and tools and teach, try to teach you reflecting skills to try to connect, you know, help you connect with your kiddo. But what's going to be more effective is us really getting curious about what's happening in your system as a parent. And really noticing and holding space for that and oftentimes healing the younger ones in you, mm -hmm. right, that need that. And then you can show up as, as in a much different space. And I, you know, part of what started me on this whole journey is when I started IFS therapy, I was going through a period of time with my kids where it just felt like everything was a struggle. And I was starting, I had never had anxiety before and I started to have anxiety. And there, I also had a situation with a friend that was going on and I went into a therapy, an IFS session, just with this angst and anxiety that I'd been feeling probably for a couple of months by then and did an IFS session and left that session and came home and felt so different. Like night and day because of this deep piece of healing work I had done in that session, I was able to be present with my kids. I was able to be patient. You know, I was, I was like a, a totally different mom to the point that I, I still remember this. I emailed my therapist and was like, oh my gosh, this is like a miracle cure, <laughs> you know, for how to become a better parent. Like it's mm -hmm. us doing our own work. And it was so, it was such a profound experience for me that that's kind of what led me on this um, path to, you know, really wanting to support other parents because it's not that we don't want to be good parents. We just, we've got, we've got to do our own inner work to get there. And so often the focus is on, well, here's this behavioral technique, or here's this thing to try to change your kid. And it all starts inside of us. Is there something else from your chapter? Um, so you wrote two chapters. Um, yeah. So we're talking more about your parenting chapter, I think. So is there something else from your parenting chapter that you feel like you want people to know um, maybe that it feels important to share. Well, one of the things that I, you know, created over the years is I, I like to use acronyms. And so I've got two that are actually three that I talk about in the chapter that I use a lot with parents. And the first one is, and they both apply for our kids outside of us, right? Our, our own children and our kids inside of us. And so the first one that I, that I use is and teach parents is 
SHUV, it's S-H-U-V, that all of us want to be seen, heard, understood, valued, and validated. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I want to help you be able to do as a parent, is to mm -hmm. see your kids, hear your kids, understand their experiences, and val value and validate, to communicate all of those things to them. But in order for you to do that for your kids, we have to help you do it for your inner ones first. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Um, the other one is pause. So, you know, sure. as parents, the most challenging thing times are when we get activated, when we're triggered um, and learning how to negotiate those moments. And, you know, I jokingly say it's kind of like AA. The first step is to acknowledge you know, that you're an alcoholic, the first step is to acknowledge I'm triggered and to, mm -hmm. and to not just allow it to completely hijack your system and, and react from there, but to acknowledge and to be in tune or attuned enough to our own system that we're aware that we've been hijacked. And so, can I just interrupt you for a second and sure. say that that actually is not as easy as you're like you're saying it because I think the it thing that I'm learning when me saying I'm triggered is is me saying it's not their behavior <laughs> like your behavior you need to just I'm, I'm using my finger right I'm pointing yeah. at your behavior like so if I'm yeah. triggered by my relationship or by my son mm -hmm. like it's it's my first go to is it's their behavior that's They're, right they did something that hurt my feelings or whatever. Like, so even for me to recognize I've been triggered feels like a huge shift. Absolutely. And that's what our managers do, right? They look outward, they point like, well, if that person hadn't done that, then, you know, yeah, whether it's true. our and kid or true. our boss yeah. or whatever, right? <laughs> so they're doing their thing and they do it well. And so mm -hmm. it is, it is. And that's like, I really slow things down with parents to kind of help them know and get in touch with how do you know when you're triggered? How do you know when that activation is happening in your system? It's good. Yeah. So to really get curious about that. So that's really the first step, but then teaching pause. So the P stands for being present with your parts. The A is to acknowledge the activation um, that's happening inside of you. The U is to unblend to ask the part to give you some space. The S is to connect with your self energy. And then the E is to extend compa compassion um, to the arising emotion. So, so good. Uh, I actually want to put make cards, you know, that have this on it because I think if parents can just whip that card out, like, oh yeah, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, I'm going to put it on my fridge. I'm yeah. like, I love that. I'm going to put that on my fridge. Yeah, so good. Sometimes yes. that's what we need in the moment, but just be, and it's like a muscle mm -hmm. that you have to, you have to do it over and over, you know, it takes a while and you're never going to do it perfectly at first, especially. And, but if we can just like, what I tell parents is nothing good comes out of conversations when you've got two activated people. Yeah. Right. Um, so there, there's, you know, almost never a situation where you have to deal with it right then and there in, in that moment. So learning to be able to take a time out, to take some space um, so that you can do those things. Cause it's not easy. Like you said, Yeah. It's um, and giving yourself the time and space to do that is so, so important. Yeah. I love that. The pause literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things I was sharing some things with Leslie that I won't share with here, but the idea of pausing before I let my 13 year old part say, you know, ridiculous, awful things that yeah. I'm just pausing and just being like, man, I've had to do that over the past couple of days. It's like, just don't speak. Just don't say yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just don't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. So learning strategies that work for us in terms of, you know, slowing our system down so that we can get the time and space. Cause you know, when you, when your kids are little and you're trying to get out the door in the morning, right. Yeah. That feels urgent. And there's a lot of energy that comes around that. And those are also the times if we can take the moment to get the space 
the rate of return on our time is going to be much better than getting into power struggles mm -hmm. and the amount of time that's required to work through a power struggle. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Those days were not fun. Yeah. <laughs> it would take forever. We had a million bags and we couldn't get out of the house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, it, I'm just, when you were saying that, I was like, there, there are so many parts of me that miss those days. And then so many parts that don't miss that aspect of it, you yeah, know, yeah. the busyness of it. Yeah. 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 I'm feeling the same way. I mean, he's only 12, but I'm definitely feeling the like, I mean, it's a big change, like a lifestyle change. Like I was, yeah. we were somewhere and uh, someone was talking, they had a six month old baby and they're talking about the nap. Like sort of their whole life is around the nap. And I just was like, mm. and my son and I were walking to the store to go get paint or something. And I was just kind of like, yeah, that's a completely different life. Like here's yeah. my, he's almost as tall as me. And we're just walking through the field. Like, yeah, we're going to the store. See you later, yeah. you know? Right. <laughs> Yeah. And maps were life and death back oh in the day. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You could plan your whole day around the nap. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's but different. I feel like there is more, there's sort of like, you know, there mom, I was involved in mom groups and there was a lot mm -hmm. of like talking about how to be with these babies and how to be a new mom and babies and toddlers. But yeah, there's not that much conversation about 12 year olds or not much conversation about how to handle this sort of shift and this loss and these new developmental things that are happening. You know, one of my favorite books to recommend to people that are in this tween stage is how to hug a porcupine. Okay. It's a great book. And it talks about, you know, the developmental changes that your kids are going through and kind of how to negotiate those rocky waters. Um, because that is what it's like trying to hug a porcupine, you know, mm -hmm. when they start in this process. And like I said to you earlier, it's, it's a, such an important process for them to go through. And what I, you know, really learned by trial and error for sure, is that it goes much better. Those, those porcupine moments go much better when I can stay connected to myself and stay in a place of curiosity rather than moving to that, oh, you're being disrespectful or, oh, you're being such a jerk, you know? And, um, yeah. yeah, that the, and it's all, you know, my third kid is getting a much different parent than my oldest one did or my yeah. middle one, because, you know, we learn, we learn as we go. Yeah. 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 Such That's a good. process. That's good. Well, I'm thankful for people like you in my life that I can just be so real and vulnerable and mm. say like, here's the mess I am. And then you can say, it's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's all parts. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then I, it's a good reminder that there's all these parts that, you know, there's just so many trailheads around parenting. There's so many yeah. trailheads yeah. in our relationships. And so why wouldn't there be trailheads when it comes to Absolutely. these little people that we It's the love? hardest thing we we'll ever do. Yeah. Like, and yeah you know, there are no manuals, you know, we have to get a, we have to study to get a driver's license to drive a car. We don't have to study to raise a kid, you know, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. we do it by trial and fire. And so, um, there are so many growth opportunities and, and so many ways that I, you know, as a parent, I remember just thinking everything I'm doing is messing my kid up, you know, and yeah. just being so hard on myself, my inner critic just became like, you know, huge and still does on days, but when I can really, you know, having this model to, to use rather than getting stuck in the spin of it, um, is just huge. I mean, it was just so life-changing for me that, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like, you know, I want to spread the word for all parents because I want everyone to have this access to, um, a process that, that I think, can can really change the way we parent and help our kids not be as burdened as they might otherwise be yeah yeah I love that and so you so you're doing that by you wrote a chapter in this book in the all together us book mm -hmm. um you wrote one on parenting and one on sand tray is that right right so That's we'll get right. together again and talk about that so with the parenting yeah. and then you are writing a book can we talk about that I am yeah Tell yeah. me about that. Yeah. So this has been in the works for a long time. And I, 
I've had to do a lot of work with my parts to get my, you know, performer parts and my parts that are like, oh, you're putting yourself out there and what a risk that is and um, get more in tune and aligned with, you know, what my purpose is and what my intention is that it's really about this book is really, it's not for therapists specifically. It's, I really want it to be for the general public um, and for it to be a way to conceptualize, you know, parenting in, through a different light through that. It's not about trying to focus on your child's behavior and have the skills or the magic one, two, three of what to do, you right. know, but yeah. that it's, but that it's really about us tuning in to our own system and connecting with ourselves. And that's, what's going to allow for genuine and authentic connection with our kids, which shifts everything. Um, you know, and, and the reality is we can't do it and we won't do it perfectly all the time, but to have a roadmap or to have, you know, a, a guide or support in, um, getting curious about our own system. I mean, I have a, a sticky on my computer that says stay curious and I, I need to write, I, I need to write it everywhere because if I, when I am activated with my kids could just do that one thing to get curious and to try to look at it through their eyes, what, what's happening in the moment to try to experience it through their eyes, it shifts everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's really, that's what the book is about and really trying to help support parents in, um, in really doing their own healing so that they can be more present and connected to their kiddos. Cause that's really the bottom line. The more healed we are, the better parent we are and our exiles and protectors, especially the strong ones will show up every day in our, you know, in our parenting. So I just, for, for when I was in the thick of it, I just had like a little moleskin book that I just tracked all of my parts that came up, you know, in, in a day to day, you know, and that thing was full. It was full with all of my parts. Love that. Well, and, yeah. and, and that helps us be curious when we think of it, this is just an, not just a, but it's an opportunity for us to really look at, you know, what parts come up because it's it, it, like, he's offering me trailheads that I'm not going to be offered anywhere else. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you, Leslie. How can people reach out to you and find out what you're doing? I know sometimes you offer parenting groups. And so tell me how people can reach out to you. Yeah. So probably the best way is through my um, website or email. So my website, which is actually in the process of being revamped, is the Stone Center NC as in North Carolina.com or my email, which is just Leslie at the Stone Center NC.com. Right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for, for meeting yeah, with me. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I always love connecting with you. I know me too. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like this episode, please subscribe, rate, like, all the things. My book is available at your favorite independent bookstore or all the places books are available. You can also visit my website, TammySallenberger.com, where you can download a free meditation on getting to know your should parts. You know, there's parts of you who remind you of what you should be doing. They sound a bit critical at times. Yes, we all have them. You can follow me at IFS Tammy on Instagram and Twitter and the One Inside Facebook page. I'm so grateful for Jack Reardon, who created the new music. Jack is a graduate of Derek Scott's IFS Stepping Stone program. Thanks, Jack, for getting me. And to you, thanks for listening.